This is causality example number two. Formally prove whether or not each system is causal. Now in this problem we want to prove whether or not each system is causal. Let's take a look at a general approach for establishing a proof like this. When a system is causal, its system output does not depend on future inputs. Here's a general proof structure that we can use. Let's imagine the same system T is subject to two different inputs, X1 and X2, to produce two different outputs, Y1 and Y2. X1 and X2 are the same up to a certain time and not, and then are different after that. We can picture it like this. Say we have a signal X1 and X2, which are the same from minus infinity up to the time N equals N naught. After that, however, they are allowed to diverge. So we'll picture X1 as being different than X2 beyond N naught. We then apply these two different signals to the same system T to produce outputs Y1 and Y2. Now at time N naught, all of the previous history of the system behavior is encapsulated in this one value. Now if y1 of n0 depends only on inputs at time n0 or less, then we say that the system is causal. So we, we essentially check to see whether or not these two signals are equal, these two output signals. If they are equal, then we say that t is causal. However, suppose the system does in fact make use of this region of x1 and x2 where they are different. Then y1 and y2 at this time and not would not be equal. That means that they are making forward references to areas of x1 and x2 that were different, and that would tell us the system is not causal. All right, let's move on to the detailed solution. This is system T4 which is x of minus n. The system t is subject to two different inputs, x2 and x1, which are the same up to n0, and then diverge after that. We want to evaluate their outputs at time n0, and then determine whether or not they are equal. So let's evaluate y1 at n equals n0. The system operation is x of minus n, and then we evaluate that at n equals n naught. Same thing for signal x2. Now we need to determine if the time index is always less than or equal to n naught for all possible values of n naught. So the emphasis here is on all values. Let's ask the question this way. Is minus n naught always less than or equal to n naught. Well, let's take some specific examples. If n naught was equal to zero, we would have the statement, is minus zero less than or equal to zero? Yes, that works. How about n naught equals three? This would say, is minus three less than or equal to three? And the answer is yes. How about negative two? Ah, here we see something different. Now we're saying, is t is 2, rather, less than or equal to minus 2? The answer clearly is no. Therefore, we conclude that the value of n0 that works is only when n0 is greater than or equal to 0. But since we need it to be true for all possible n0, then we conclude that y1 and y2 are not the same, and t4, therefore, is not causal. Now we can get perhaps a little more insight on this by considering what this change of the time index argument is actually doing. So I put down a generic x of n sequence for some specific time values. Now at minus two, switching the sign means that we are requesting x of two. At n minus one, we are requesting for our output x of one, and so forth. So as we consider what this really means, it's saying that for these, these range of values, the system is making forward references to future values that have not been applied to the system yet. 
Now, in this case, it's making references to past values, and that's acceptable. All right, our second system, T5. This is n times x of n. Let's do the same thing as before, evaluating the two outputs at n naught. Now we ask the question, is the time index expression always less than or equal to n naught? The answer is yes. Y1 is equal to Y2 at n naught, therefore T5 is causal. Here's our third system, T6. It's based on the sum of k equals 0 to n of the inputs x of k. I need to point out that when n is less than 0, that we have an empty summation. And that gives us a result of 0. There potentially could be other interpretations for that, but that's, that's what we're going to use here. We have the same setup as before. Here's my outputs, evaluated at n equals n naught. Let's expand this summation so we can see more clearly what's going on. We start at k equals 0, keep adding in values until we finally get to the vicinity of n naught. Let's call that the previous one would be x2 of n naught minus 1. And then we get to x2 of n naught. This expanded sum would be the same form for x1. Now we ask the question, in each case, is the time index always less than or equal to n naught? Let's try looking at a specific case that might seem to cause some problems. I'm going to change n naught to the specific value of minus 2. If we go with the definition of the summation that this is minus or x2 of minus 2 running up to x2 of 0, then it would seem like we have problems with forward references. If n naught is at minus 2, we're looking ahead in time. However, using the definition of this as being an empty sum, this would this case specifically would be equal to 0. Therefore, we have no forward references, and the two values y1 and y2 are in fact the same for all n naught and t6 is causal. And that wraps up this example.